welcome to my second ever stream. Um, hope you guys are all well. And um, let's change some of the settings here now. Right. Hope that all the audio and the visual looks good. And um, yeah, so as the title suggests, today we're going to talk about blends. So my first stream, if you saw it, um, if you've watched it back, you'll see I really just talked about what's behind me, and that's single malt whiskey. Um, it's pretty much 90% of what I drink, and it's what I really know most about. But I um, had a few questions about um, blends, so I um, thought I would, um, I would run through some, some blends with you today. So I've got four blends to talk to you about. Um, first one is going to be um, Scotland's best-selling um, Scotch whisky. Um, I think that's best-selling of all whiskies in Scotland. That includes single malts. Um, and that is um, Famous Grouse. You'll all be familiar with Famous Grouse. Um, had this bottle for a couple of years, so it's maybe got a new shaped bottle uh, now. But um, yeah, it's a, it's a well-known blend. So we're going to give that a try. Um, after um, Famous Grouse, we're going to go to another quite well-known blend. Um, I'm pretty sure it's uh, you've probably probably heard of it. White Mackay. Uh, so White Mackay, uh, blended Scotch whisky. Um, pretty sure it's made around the sort of Glasgow area. Uh, yeah, um, says here it's uh, distilled and produced in Glasgow. So um, that this is actually one of my favourite um, blends, um, and not pricey at all. Um, so a good one to maybe get get into. Set the third one even uh, is slightly different. This one's called Dimple. Now this comes in quite a cool bottle. Um, I think that's where it takes its name from, Dimple. Um, it says there it's aged fifteen years. Um, I think it's, it's called. It's, it's said that it's aged fifteen years because the whiskies that go into it, the youngest one will be fifteen years of age. So it's all quite, uh, quite well aged whiskies in there. Um, and so legally, to put fifteen years on the front, that it would mean that the youngest whisky in there is fifteen. They wouldn't be able to put fifteen years on the bottle and have maybe say a six year old whisky in there. So. We've got Dimple, and then the last one we're going to have a go at is, again, up there with my favourite blends, actually, along with White Mackay, but a little bit more special, and it's uh, Black Bottle. So um, Black Bottle is uh, quite an interesting um, uh, blend. Um, all the whiskies in, in Black Bottle come from the island of Isla, and if you know anything about um, Isla, um, most of the whiskies are quite heavily peated, um, quite smoky, um, but this is not awfully peaty or smoky, uh, and I'll explain why in a little bit. So those are the four whiskies we're gonna we're gonna have a look at, and um, just to give you a little overview about why it's called a blend. Um, so compared to the whiskies that are behind me here. Um, Blended whiskies are literally made of a, a blend of, of multiple um, malt whiskies, grain whiskies. Um, you know, you could have upward upward of fifty, maybe even more um, uh, single malt or or grain whiskies uh, mixed together um, in really precise proportions, um, usually by a master blender. Um, and it's uh, the master blender is a person who basically holds the the secret or the the um, recipe to making these blends and to try and keep them consistent. Um, so yeah, that is the difference really. Um, so we'll go ahead and we'll uh, we'll take a look at Famous Grouse. So like I said, best-selling Scotch whiskey in Scotland. Um, this this stuff, you know, you find it for sale everywhere. Um, supermarkets, corner shops. Um, it's 
really, really easy to get hold of. Um, on average, you're sort of looking to spend between 18 to 20 pounds on a bottle um, of Famous Grouse. Um, apparently it was first made in 1896, um, but it wasn't called Famous Grouse at the start. Um, they actually named it in 1905. Um, so it's been going a while. Um, actually, funny enough, it says established 1800 here, so I might have got that first number wrong. But uh, yeah, uh, obviously very well known. Um, everybody's heard of Famous Grouse. It's They've got a, an advert at Christmas time, and it's usually this character, the, the red grouse, um, walking across the screen to some um, well-known music. Um, so uh, if you hear the music, you'll, you'll know it. Um, so on the back, um, it explains that it's it's a very balanced um, blend um, and quite a malty one. Um, so it's uh, got that sort of malty uh, flavour in it. Um, so anyway, we'll we'll pour a glass, and um, I've decided on each of these um, blends today to to use a different glass. So this is the first glass I'm going to use. Um, nice crystal glass um, LSA I think is the make of it um, and funny enough it's got a little air bubble in the glass uh, and I think that is um, on purpose because <laughs> the other, we got two in the set and um, they've both got that dimple in them so oh the, sorry the, um, the air bubble in the glass um, now one of the big differences with um, blends compared to single malts is they'll normally come with a screw top. Um, a lot of uh, single malts that you see behind me um, usually have a cork of some sort. Um, they don't, they, I don't think I've ever come across a single malt with a screw top. Um, but those bottles behind me, you're you know, talking 40, maybe 50 pounds a bottle. Like I said, this 18 to 20 pounds. So um, yeah, that's what you get for your money. That's what you're paying for. So let's pour ourselves. Now, seeing as it's it's um, getting on for 10 past one in the afternoon here, so I'm not gonna pour myself too big a measure or too big a dram, um, just enough to get a taste and uh, to explain it to you guys. So we'll let that sit in the glass a little bit. Now, what I love about this type of glass is um, it's completely straight sided so you can actually start looking at the legs uh, in the whiskey um, and it's starting to form already I don't know if you can see them on there um, sort of lines of, of whiskey falling down the edge of the glass and that's that's known as the legs legs of the whiskey so the more legs it's got essentially the oilier the whiskey is the thicker it is um, but yeah, this one's got got a few legs. Um, try and get get it so you can see them. You can just see them running down the edge of the glass there. So yeah, it's quite nice, quite consistent legs. So um, you know, you can tell from that it's it's a pretty good quality whiskey. Um, you know, it's nothing. It's not cheap and nasty. It's uh, it's the real deal if you like. It's the real deal because there's quite a lot of whiskies out there just now. Not so much the blends, but the the more expensive single malts. Quite a lot of them are actually counterfeit. Um, if you buy them, you know, from somewhere online that's not reputable, or if you don't buy them, you know, if you buy it from somebody down the street um, and they're claiming it's a two hundred pound whiskey and he can sell it to you for fifty pounds, walk away or even run away because um, there's a good chance it's not the real thing. So, um, but one of the one of the tricks um, with um, a single malt, if you just want to double check try and find a bottle where I've got quite a bit in if you want to double check the quality of the whiskey um, to make sure it's the real stuff shake it and if that clears relatively quickly I give it a good shake there but you can see how the majority of the bubbles have cleared already if that was a fake whiskey that would still be bubbly it'd still be about a centimeter of bubble that would take ages to disappear but you can see that 
give it a shake and it goes pretty quick. So that is the real stuff. Now obviously they could fill an expensive empty bottle with a um, with a cheap whiskey and um, that would get around that trick but I think um, it's got to be careful because where there's lots of money and lots of value in things people um, will always try and take advantage so so that's a quick tip from me that's the tip of the day uh, how to identify fake whiskey is give it a shake in the bottle uh, if it um, if it if it disappears all those um, bubbles disappear quite quickly you know you've got whiskey um, of at least sort of 40 percent um, strength so while I've been chatting away about that this whiskey has been warming up nicely in the glass um, getting a bit of air aeration um, so let's have a little smell well first thing you can tell is really crisp a really crisp clean smell uh, on the nose it's quite sweet smelling sort of like toffee um, you know like toffee apple almost um, And it's quite floral um, quite delicate um, crisp and delicate and it's just a sort of hint of barley sort of biscuity niceness so yeah amazing now not many people you'll not see many people nose and take notice of a blend especially famous grouse because people just drink it and mix it with coke or lemonade or um, but it's really nice just to sit down and and appreciate it. You know, this bottle of whiskey is only 18, 20 pounds. But actually, it's good. It's good quality stuff. So give it give it a time of day. That's what I say. Um, you know, give it a bit of time. Appreciate the smell because, like I said in the other stream, my first stream is that whiskey is all about these experiences. Um, you know. From buying, from finding the whiskey you want to buy, doing the research, to buying it in the shop, that's exciting. Getting it home, opening it up for the first time, smelling it, tasting it, looking at the colour. Um, you know, that's quite a light amber. I wouldn't even say it's an amber, that's probably a, almost like a, yeah, light caramel sort of flavour. Uh, color even you know smell it taste it put a bit of water with it taste it again because it'll have changed and that's the beauty of whiskey is you've got you know you've got two drinks in one bottle so what, what other drink can you say that you buy a bottle of for this one 18 20 pounds and you actually get two drinks in one whiskey every bottle of whiskey that I've got maybe every time you put a little drop of water in it's going to taste different so um, you know that's that's uh, that's that's beauty whiskey so um, we'll have we've, so we've had a, a good smell of it it's crisp it's clean it's sort of floral toffee sort of quite sweet smells so the question is will those flavors translate those smells translate into flavors um, so let's have a let's have a taste and before I taste whiskey I always try and give it a sniff before I taste it because it adds to the experience it's all about all a part of the experience is getting that smell in your nose whilst you're tasting it and it'll give you the full experience of the whiskey so creamy just smooth creamy maltiness definitely that biscuit is coming through um, just a little hint of spice at the front of the tongue just a little hint um, quite complex really um, if I had to compare it to a single malt I think I would compare it to um, crag and malt my favorite single malt um, so 
quite similar, quite complex. So if you like, so this is this is what you can do. You can buy this for 18, 20 pounds a bottle. If you like that, you know you like that. And you can quite comfortably go and buy this for 40, 45 pound. So this is what I'll try and do on the on the on the stream as well is say, well, this for 18, 20 pounds tastes very much like this. So you can say, well, I, I'll go and buy a bottle of that, give it a try. You can buy a half a bottle, um, be half the price. And then you're like, oh yeah, I like I like the famous grouse. So I'll go and try a bottle of Craggamore 12 year old, you know? So it just takes the risk out of buying whiskey because like I said in my, my other stream, I, um, I bought a whiskey once and I, I never did any research about it. I knew I liked the brand. I'm not going to disclose the brand. I, I knew I liked the brand. I knew I liked those type, that, that brand of whiskey, but it was a different edition. It was a different type of finish. It was a different cask. It was different, you know, it was a different style and I didn't do my research and I didn't like it. So it, there's nothing worse than getting a whiskey home. You're all excited about it. And then you pour yourself a dram and you think, nah, not for me. But I'll keep it. And later in my whiskey tasting or whiskey enjoying career, hopefully I'll come to like it. Because that is something about whiskey is that your taste buds change as you get older. And what you like in your 20s and 30s you probably won't like in your 50s and 60s. And somebody told me once, when you start drinking whiskey, don't go to the real PT smoky giants like Ardbeg and, uh, you know, those Isla, big Isla distilleries. Um, go to your space sides and your low runs. Start on the light stuff and work your way up because once you get a taste for PT smoky whiskies, there's really no way back because your taste buds will get used to it. And uh, that's 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 the way to do it. Um, I've just realized that I've got my headphones plugged into my computer and I was thinking, why am I not hearing myself? It's because I'm not plugged into my microphone. So if you just excuse me a second. Right, that's better. <laughs> I was thinking, I thought I'd done something wrong with the stream and I thought, oh, this is all going wrong. But no, it's because I wasn't plugged into my, my microphone. So anyway, I can hear myself now, so I know what you're hearing. So I, I can, it, it's clear and it's good. So that's fine, it gives me a bit of confidence. So like I said, yeah, if you get onto the strong peaty, smoky whiskies early on, you're really gonna struggle to go back and enjoy the, the more delicate space sides and lowlands and some of the, even the highland whiskies um, are quite delicate um, and you just won't be able to enjoy them so it's up to you if you really do like that flavor to start off with um, good for you um, you obviously found what you like and as long as you're happy to stick with that for the rest of your whiskey drinking days go for it but um, I personally I'm staying away from those types of whiskies until I maybe get to, you know, my 50s um, and you know, work my way through those. Whereas at the moment, in my 30s, I'm enjoying my Speysides and my Highland whiskies and my Island whiskies, which are different to Isla. Um, I like Sajura, um, you know, Highland Park, really good, good quality single malt. Um, so, yeah. Um, I don't know how I got onto that, but let's go back to Famous Grouse. So there is a tiny, tiny bit of smoke in this whiskey. Um, and that will come from the blend. One of the whiskies in here, or maybe three or four of the whiskies in here, will have a bit of smoke influence. Um, and they'll have put it in there just to give it a, a little extra, a little, um, little hit of smoke, which is nice because it doesn't overpower it. It's beautiful. And the finish on this is, it's sweet. It's definitely sweet. 
Um, there must be quite a lot of whiskies in, in here that um, that were finished in a sherry cask um, and, you know, American oak casks because you get that little bit of vanilla coming through. Not very strong, but, um, you know, they would have they would have obviously used ex-bourbon casks. Um, I don't know if they might have used, you know, any virgin oak casks, so um, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, obviously, the, the beauty of a blend is nobody knows. Um, you know, there's some blends that people know, oh, there's, there's some of this in it, there's some of that in it, but that's about all we're going to ever know. Um, to know you'd have to become the master blender for Famous Grouse um, or for what's the name of the company um, Matthew Gloag and Son Limited Perth, Scotland that's the name of the company so you'd have to work for them for probably quite a few years to be trusted with the um, with the with the recipe um, so we'll never know but all we can do is surmise and, um, and enjoy what what we get so a lot of people won't do this, but I do. Um, I get my trusty Edradawa um, water jug, uh, which has watered all my whiskies over the years. Edradawa is the smallest um, distillery in Scotland, located just outside Pitlochry, north of Perth. Um, so it's a Highland whisky. Uh, been to the distillery, that's where I got this. Um, really quaint little whitewashed buildings very small scale it's got a lovely bar you can go afterwards and and enjoy different uh whiskies not just edradawa and that's how you pronounce it edradawa um and uh yeah this is this is the one so i literally when i water my whiskey i just try and put as little as i can like that just a tiny drop it's all you need some people use a straw. If I had a straw in the house, I'd show you, but you get a straw and you can use it like a pipette. You put it into your water, put your thumb over the top and then let it go. And you can literally just put drop by drop into your whiskey um, as you go. And some whiskies like um, Lagavulin, for example, which is an Isla whiskey, quite smoky, a bit of peat in it, but not too overpowering. Um, somebody told me years ago, if you every drop of water you put into a glass of Lagavulin, it changes every time. It's a different drink every time. And I've tried it, and it's true. It does change a lot. Every little amount of whis uh, water you put in the whiskey, it changes. Um, so, you know, a lot of people won't do this with them, um, with them um, blends. But I like to put a little splash of water and see how it changes it. So, if anything, on the nose, it probably smells sweeter and actually it's brought out a little bit of spicy smells and although this doesn't sound what you know this, what you smell is what you smell and you should never feel ashamed of saying right it smells like this it smells like that if you smell it that's what you smell and what i smell there now is a little bit of swimming pool chlorine yeah that's what i smell <laughs> you you might not smell it i do but it's only a hint. It's that, I think with a smell, when you get a smell, there's parts to the smell. And although when I smell this, I say it smells like swimming pool, it smells like chlorine. It doesn't smell like a swimming pool. It smells like a part of that smell. And that's what's important. It's just identifying these little glimmers of information. So... Ooh. So with a little bit of water, it's it's actually brought it out a little bit. It's 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 not as sweet, but I think the spice has gone up a little bit. It's a bit spicier, and it's towards the back of the tongue and up the nose a little bit with the spice this time compared to it. So so that's it. That's a prime example of a whiskey that's changed with a little drop. You saw how little water I put in there. A little drop of water. And it's made a big, big difference. Mm. But still very sweet, quite malty, quite creamy finish. Um, so yeah, no, really, really good. 
you know, you can see how Famous Krause is a best-selling whiskey. Um, although I enjoy it as it is with a little bit of water. I know that lots of people drink it with Coke or lemonade. And that's great. If that's the way you enjoy your whiskey, that's the way you enjoy your whiskey. And I'm not here to tell you that's wrong. You know, everybody enjoys things certain ways. And if that's how you enjoy your famous grouse, keep doing it. Because, um, yeah, it's, I think it's, a, it's one of those classic Scottish drinks that it's a bit like Iron Brew. Um, everybody knows about it. Everybody, you know, it's just it's one of those classics. That everybody should have a bottle of famous grouse in the house. That's what I say. Everybody should have a bottle in the house. So, no, really enjoyed that. It was really good. Get every last drop. So, you might. I got a question in my last stream about what's the difference between malt whiskey um, and or what's what makes a single malt, basically. Um, and so, seeing as we're talking um, uh, blends, um, blends will have all sorts of whiskies in them. They'll have malt whiskey, they'll have grain whiskey. Um, and grain whiskey, the main difference is that bourbon made in, the, in, the Amer in, in America is, is all grain whiskey. None of it is made with, with barley the way that we do in Scotland with single malts. So that grain can can differ, but m the majority of US bourbon is made with corn. That is the grain that they use. Um, I don't know the process that well, but essentially I would imagine it will be the same sort of process as, as um, making a Scotch whiskey, is that grain will be steeped in warm water and that will start to develop the, um, you know, expand the grain and open it up um, and get the sugars working in and start a sort of bit of a foot formation for <laughs> fermentation process um and they'll obviously add yeast i would imagine um and so on in japan um somebody asked me about japanese whiskey what i thought about japanese whiskey in japan they use a lot of rye um uh, rye is the grain they normally use for making japanese whiskey so um i don't have a japanese whiskey in my collection um and um, until i do uh, i won't be able to do a tasting on here with it but um rye is what they use so that would give them a, a different a different edge um but I've, I've always said if they use the same ingredients as we do here in scotland their single malts would be just the same as our single malts um if they use the same process the same barrels the same same everything it's gonna be it's gonna taste the same um so that is the difference between um so that's great a grain whiskey and um what we've got behind us here obviously is a single malt whiskey and every single one of those will have just been made with malted barley and that is the only um that's the only uh, grain that's put in uh, or is used in the process um yeah and obviously it's called single malt because it's made by one distillery um in you know it's a single, it's a single estate. A bit like wine, you get single estate wines where all those grapes have come from the same place, the same estate. Um, so yeah, um, so that's a little bit of background for you about um, grain whiskey, malt whiskey, what the difference is. But a lot of blended whiskies have got um, grain whiskey in them. A lot of grain whiskey, absolutely. So um, the next one we're going to have a look at is um, White Mackay. White Mackay are based in Glasgow, my favourite city of Scotland. Um, I've experienced Glasgow and Edinburgh in my 10 years here in Scotland and I would always say that Glasgow would be my favourite um, city. It's If you've not been to Glasgow, you've got to, you've got to go and visit. Um, it's a really, really friendly people. Um, beautiful uh, architecture um, and it's got a Glasgow's got a, a, a sort of real down to earth feeling about it um, that I really like um, yeah and you've got to sort of go and explore Glasgow a bit you know um, to see the true Glasgow but yeah really really like Glasgow um, and there's a few good distilleries uh, actually Ochentoshin is um, on the outskirts of Glasgow um, and as I mentioned Ochentoshin, I think in my last 
the stream. Somebody was asking about good um, single malt to start off on. Um, I think I mentioned, actually I mentioned Glen, what was it? Um, Glen Livet and Glen Kinshi. But Ochentoshin would be a good one as well. So um, any anybody wanting to make a start into single malts, give that a try. Ochentoshin, very good one. One of my favourite Ochentoshins was actually the Three Wood, um, where they still are in a, an ex-bourbon cask. Then they put it in a, I think it's a sherry cask, and then they put it back into a, an ex-bourbon, I think, or maybe a different sherry cask. But it's finished in three different barrels, um, or distilled in, no, sorry, matured in three different barrels. And um, yeah, that's a, it's the colour of, of, of Ochentosh and Three Wood is amazing. It's probably the same colour as this Dalmore 15 year old, that sort of colour. Look how dark that is. Just beautiful, dark colour. Um, and a beautiful bottle actually, the Dalmore. Really good one. Um, they're actually. I tried a Dalmore eighteen-year-old and a Dalmore fifteen-year-old because I was trying to decide what I was going to buy. And I actually like the fifteen-year-old over the, the eighteen, and that's how I've got this bottle. Um, bought it for my birthday a couple of years ago, so you can see, two years old and it's still got that much in it. So, but yeah, real good one. So, um, yeah, Ochentosh and Three Wood is is um is a good whiskey. But we're here to talk about blends, and like I said, our next blend is White Mackay. Um, now, just as a note on a lot of these whiskies, is a lot of them do include colorants to get this color. Um, you can see there's a bit of difference in color between the White Mackay and the um, the famous grouse. Um, I don't think Famous Grouse have put too much colourants in theirs. I think they've tried to try to keep it as natural looking as possible. Um, but there will be ca caramels. They normally use caramels to 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 to, um, to colour it a little bit. Um, so yeah, but White Mackay quite a lot of colour. I would say in that. If I hold it that way, you can see the colour through the bottle. Um, you know, it's that is quite a dark amber colour. Um, but that's fine, we won't hold that against it um, because you know a lot of people say you know you, you taste with your eyes um, and that's what they're trying to do is they're trying to entice people in with that really rich colour um, which is fine um, that's that's what they want to do that's what they want to do and um, it's worked on me because I like it um, and here I've actually got a white Mackay glass you can see that um, given to us by uh, good friends of ours uh, a white Mackay glass to enjoy my white Mackay whiskey. I'm a bit, I'm a bit sad that I like stuff like this. This, this is a lot of things that, that, are good. I think is, um, is getting, uh, getting things to match. And um, so, this bottle is probably I've probably had this for about three years, maybe even four years. It's a, it's a fair age this bottle. So I think they've changed their bottle since this one, but it's the same stuff. It says, uh, blended Scotch whiskey, triple matured for a smoother, richer taste. Um, it's 40% um, in strength, uh, just, um, made in Glasgow by White Mackay Distillers. Um, how much does it say here? Yeah, so, but uh, they've definitely changed their bottle. I know this is not the current bottle, but it's the same stuff. So again, we've got a screw top uh, with nice, so they sort of two, Lions, uh, which is like this sort of, um, it says crafted for generations, which is a sort of logo. Um, so I'll have a go at pouring this into the white Mackay glass, which I'm quite chuffed about. Oh, sorry if I'm banging about a little bit, probably bursting your eardrums as, a, as you're watching this. Um, so yeah, White Mackay, what can I tell you about this? So like I said, triple matured. Um, so it's made up apparently of 41 different whiskies. 41 different whiskies in this glass, right? So that's a lot of different whiskies. Um, so it's 
first off it's matured in a bourbon cask and then apparently it's transferred to a sherry cask which yeah it'll have picked up a lot of that color from the sherry cask to be fair um and it should have picked up a lot of sweetness um and then apparently it's then mixed with um, aged grain whiskies and then put into a barrel again to mature uh, so that's how it's triple matured first off ex bourbon casks and it goes then that's transferred to a sherry cask so that's number two then it's mixed with these aged grain whiskies and uh, matured again i would imagine in ex bourbon casks i don't think they put it in a sherry cask again sherry casks are quite expensive um and so they, i think they limit how much they use sherry casks um yeah the color of it like i said the color rich mahogany is is the official color um very rich mahogany color um quite golden um and apparently glittering amber uh, which yeah it's um i would say the golden definitely quite a dark it's almost like a burnt golden um if that's such a thing but it doesn't matter if it's not such a thing if that's what i think it looks like that's what i think it looks like and that's what it's all about um yeah so really quite a dark colored blend so let's have a a smell right on the legs yeah there's the odd leg coming down there a little bit more haphazard than the um than the famous grouse but no it's good Ooh, wow okay i'm getting a bit of varnish like furniture polish varnish sort of smell quite 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 a strong alcohol smell i think it's only 40 percent wow that really just hits you with that yeah it's very quite strong um Officially, apparently it's got a bit of marzipan and manuka honey smells and it does smell sweet it, it does you can't creamy caramel demerara sugar pineapple cider apple and apparently praline chocolate I do actually get that when you smell if you open like a box of belt really nice Belgian chocolates you get that that sort of What would you describe it as? This is the thing. I know the word in my head, but it's, you get like a, it's quite a heady smell. Hmm. Yeah, that's, that's a whole lot of smells in one glass. Absolutely. And again, White Mackay is the whiskey that people just buy at the bar and say, pour some Coke on top of it, pour some lemonade on top of it. And you don't get this experience. But it's there it's there for you to enjoy um so i would say next time you go to the bar and you're gonna mix it with lemonade or coke have a little smell and a taste of it first before you put the mixer in you know because it might actually improve your your enjoyment of the mixed drink Ooh, yeah it's a good smell of whiskey absolutely good quality so let's have a have a taste wow so you think from the smell it's gonna like punch you in the mouth but actually it's quite mellow it's quite mellow and like sort of fruity quite tropical sort of fruity syrupy you know orangey Sort of tastes it's really actually quite quite delicate and it does it really is just melts into the mouth and it stays stays about for quite a while um towards the end you get towards the end you get like syrupy sort of peaches and um, quite orangey, quite sweet, orangey, zesty type tastes. And it's actually quite a long finish. And when we say long finish, 
we mean it, it lingers about in the mouth after you've drunk it and swallowed it. It stays on the tongue or stays stays around. So that's a good that's a good thing. Famous grouse didn't really hang about that much. Um, it wasn't a very long finish, but white Mackay, hmm. I can see now. I've not drank it for a while, but I can see how it's one of my favourite blends because value for money. I never actually mentioned the value of this. Even cheaper than Famous Grouse, 16 to 18 pounds a bottle. You know, 16 to 18 pounds, depending where you're shopping, but that's the sort of price you're looking at. Uh, and that's a good quality whiskey for that price. Um, definitely. Definitely that sort of furniture polish smell in it. That really, mmm, good stuff. So let's put a bit of water with it. You know, gotta gotta treat them all the same here. Little little, little splash of water from the Edradour mug. That's enough. That's plenty. Like I said, if I had a little straw, I would do my little pipette trick. Um, but I'll need to show you that. I'll, I'll go. I'll get some in the shop uh, in the next few days, and we'll um, we'll show you that. Oof. Right, again, a bit of water just has woken it up, you know. It's woken the whiskey up. And like I said in the last stream, each and every one of these whiskies, even the ones behind me, have all been diluted with water before they've been bottled anyway. So adding a little bit of water won't harm it. It will not harm it at all. The only whiskies that won't be diluted are any cask strength whiskies. So if you've got a cask strength, um, it, they usually come out about between 50 and 65% um, by volume in strength. So that's when you know you've got a cask strength. Whiskey is it's it's usually a funny number like 63.5% or um, 59 or, you know, um, it's, it's not been watered down. That is basically been taken out of the cask and it's been put in a bottle. And that stuff is really strong. And I've got a bottle of that. Um, in the cupboard um, for special occasions and um, you do need to add quite a bit of water with it um, because if you drink that neat it actually tingles on the on your lips because it's so high in alcohol it almost evaporates on your lips um, you know, and you could actually use that as as hand sanitizer just now but that I'm not using that as hand sanitizer no chance um, so yeah adding a bit of water doesn't hurt the whiskey at all as long as you don't drown it with water um you know don't you know don't put it you know one parts whiskey to 10 parts water that's just that's just ridiculous um but if you're starting starting off with whiskey don't be, sh be ashamed to put you know more water than normal so you know even 50 50 whiskey to water i would try start with that and then just bring the, the amount of water down every time and that'll just get your taste buds used to whiskey because it is a strong drink and your mouth has to get used to it. Um, you don't, no, no, you know, we're not all born loving whiskey. It's like if you think back to when you had your first beer, who can honestly hand on heart say that they love the taste of their first beer? I can't, but now I can't get enough of stuff. So that's because I've got used to it and it's like anything. Um, you've got to get used to it. You've got to get your mouth and your taste buds used to it. So that's what you're going to do with whiskey. Give it time. It's um, a lot of people try whiskey once and say, no, don't like it. Don't like whiskey. That's it. They just close the book. They close the book on that, um, on that chapter. And you've got to give it a chance um, and try different whiskeys. And the more you try, the more you'll enjoy them and the more your mouth will get used to it. And, um, You'll, you'll be a, a whiskey connoisseur before you know it. Um, so, yeah, a bit of water has opened up the bouquet of the whiskey, if you want it to be posh, um, the smell. Mm. So, it, but it's mellowed out the flavour. It definitely has rounded off all the edges. It's not as strong anymore. Um, it's not sweet. Um, and it's, it's definitely just mellowed out a bit. So actually, that's just beautiful. 
that's really nice a little splash of water has helped it out just making it a bit more mellow and you know a nicer sort of chilled out drink to drink rather than you know after each mouthful you think Oof, that's just it's made it you know just just take the edge off that's that's all it's done taking the edge off rounded all the edges and it's just a nice rounded drink now in quite a rounded glass i might add luckily it's flat at the bottom so it doesn't rock around the table yeah good good stuff so yeah uh, what else can i tell you about white Mackay? don't think there's much else i can tell you about it it's um like i said price wise it's cheaper than than famous grouse uh, you can also buy it in half bottles in the shop so it'll be half the price uh, if you just want to try a little bit um, but no it, it definitely um, you can tell it's been finished in the sherry cask or it's, it's been in a sherry cask at one point in its life because it's well one the colour um, and two the sweetness you know the sweetness is there and the spice you get a little bit of spice on the nose that comes from the the oak casks um, for example um, I like a rum from uh, Glasgow called Wester rum um, and they've just been doing some little special releases recently and they used um, virgin oak casks so casks that had never been used in any drinks production as far as I'm aware so it's virgin oak it's not ex bourbon or ex whiskey for, for that matter it's just a brand new cask they put their rum in to mature for i think they said it had been maturing for about three months and yeah out from that oak you get lots of vanilla and lots of spices and that all just comes from the wood it doesn't come from anything else it comes from the wood um it's the interaction of the whiskey next to the wood um because oak um is actually full of uh, tannins um and those tannins um you know they get released into the into the rum in that case but um with when we're talking whiskey it's the same it's the same um hello cider game site cider game um how many types of drinks can you make uh to be honest with you, I don't really make whiskies. I just, uh, I just enjoy them. I just drink them. <laughs> um, I'm not, um, I'm not big on making cocktails and stuff. Um, but there are some amazing cocktails you can, you can make out of whiskey. Um, so, but thanks for the question. Anyway, thanks for the question. Um, I wish I made all these whiskies. I'd be a very rich man if I did. Um, but all I do here is, um, is just taste them and give you a, a description to see if you. You might get interested in whiskey or you might get bitten by the bug um like i have for the last 10 years so yeah um yeah sorry don't make drinks but i um i just taste them so uh we're drinking a, a white Mackay here at the moment um it's a blended whiskey so it's not a single malt it's a blend i don't know if you if you're familiar with it there's the um there's the bottle don't know where you are in the world but if you're you're in the UK you've probably seen that in a bar or in the shop oh um, yeah so um, there you go I'll get this one uh, I'll enjoy the rest of this white Mackay and you'll notice when I'm drinking my whiskey I make some funny shapes with my mouth that's because I'm actually moving the whiskey around inside my cheeks through my teeth around my tongue top of the, my, my mouth under my tongue just really the whole, you know a lot of people think that you only taste with your tongue well actually no send it around your mouth it also interacts with your saliva in your mouth um, that's why a lot of people say you should hold a single malt in your mouth for as many seconds as it is years old so a 12 year old whiskey you would hold in your mouth for 12 seconds and i'll see it 18 year old whiskey 18 seconds and so on um and what it, that what that does it gives the whiskey a chance to interact with your 
saliva and it changes. It's a bit like adding water to your whiskey. Adding a bit of saliva in your mouth changes it. And it'll actually, you can actually notice it changing in your mouth, um, which is amazing um, because not only can you drink it straight with a little bit of water, you can, you can change the flavor in your mouth as well. So give that a try next time you're drinking your whiskey. Hold it in your mouth. Do it. Do a bit of a challenge. Um, you know, hold it in your mouth for ten seconds, say, and you'll notice it change. It'll taste different from when you put it in your mouth to when you you swallow it. That sounds dodgy, but uh, let's not go there. Um, yeah. So. But yeah, white Mackay really have something for these need to put sit these bottles on so you can see them while I'm drinking them but what could I do here I could turn that around oh I can mess no oh, look at that they look almost professional um so yeah drinking a white Mackay just now in a white Mackay glass I'll have enough um yeah, so really good, really good whiskey for the price. 16 to 18 pounds, that bottle. Can't go wrong. Cannot go wrong. That's how I've got a bottle in the house because it's a good, it's good value for money. Um, you know, somebody comes to the house and they say, oh, I just need a whiskey with a bit of lemonade or a bit of Coke. Well, there you go. I can give them a bit of White Mackay. I can give them a famous grouse. I'm not going to give them a Jura or an Isla or a, you know, a, 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 sorry, a, an Old Portney or a Talisker or a Cragginmore. No way. Um, that, not in my house anyway. <laughs> so, yeah, White Mackay. Enjoying this. Nice one. Oh, cool. Yeah, absolutely. Big shout out to um, Sean Ranklin. Uh, he was apparently, uh, so Black Peppermint Lince, one of the, uh, one of our viewers just now asking for a shout out for Sean Ranklin. So he was at the protests all last week giving people water. So yeah, well done. Um, He's uh, got a hashtag there, BLM, Black Lives Matter, obviously. Um, you know, I'll go off whiskey for a second because um, uh, this deserves um, some, some air time. But when I watched the video of um, George Floyd, um, it actually hurt my soul. Um, I was actually shaking all morning after watching that video. Um, I, I just what I felt, I, I actually felt appalled to be a human being when I watched that video. I felt appalled to be the same species as that, as that police officer. I felt, I, I just, I was so enraged with what I just watched. But I'll tell you what I was most enraged about was, did you see how many people were just recording it? Did you just not think, what, at what point did those people not just turn around and say, hang on, we need to get that guy's knee off his neck? At what point, you know, I would like to think that if I was there, I would have said to people, right, one person carry on filming, but we need to, we need to get that guy's knee off his neck. And okay there were police officers but wrong's wrong um, and what I would have liked to think I would have done was I would have said to a few people right let's rush just, just let's just rush them let's just rush them and um, get that guy's knee off his neck um, because if he'd have got his knee off his neck for a couple of minutes it could have saved his life and I was just a little bit appalled that people just stood there and filmed um, it comes a time when you have to put the cameras down and act. Um, but 
I hope that police officer gets what what's coming to him. I hope he uh, he gets a lot of time. Um, and I like I said, I was just appalled. So yeah, absolutely, Black Lives Matter. But I'd like to say also, all lives matter. Um, I believe in the fact that we're all we're all a part of the human race and we should all treat each other with a lot more respect and kindness um you know that the the black rights movement obviously is an amazing thing and it should carry on but we've just got to be careful that we don't deepen the divide between everyone um you know we're all the same essentially we're, we're all human beings and um not one part of the human race is more important than the other um and but i know what causes this is is labels we're, we're we're all labeled you know i'm a white male george floyd was a black male you know you've got heterosexuals metrosexuals homosexuals you've got big people small people tall short thin fat um you know you've got it all and it's only the label that divides us so if we can try and work on maybe maybe getting rid of labels um i think it can only help but no absolutely respect respect to um sean rank ranklin for um for helping people with with water um good on him um so yeah no there's your so i went off a bit on there but um i think uh, anybody in uh, in any position has uh, has got a duty to talk about this and to bring it into into the public eye so no absolutely um well done him for uh, for helping the the uh, protesters there but with the protesting um looting and and burning flags i don't think it's the way forward um yes it it it, it creates change but it creates change for the sake of change um you know burning down a shop and and looting everything that's in it that's a change because you've changed it from being a pristine shop but it's, there's nothing going on to an empty shop that's burning down um yet yeah, to change but is it the right change um you know um but i i do see absolutely that the people who are, are riot are, are um uh, looting are basically hooligans that are just seeing an opportunity to go wild and they're nothing really to do with the with the Black Lives Matter or, or, or movement or the, or the or any movement. They are just basically out for it themselves. So, um, nah, not interested in, in, in the people who are looting and all that. That's just stupid. Uh, and they're actually detracting from um, the focus that it should be, uh, which is that uh, police officers need to be better trained in America and probably all over the world um, on um, how they do their jobs um, and how they approach situations. So. But we'll uh, we'll go back to the whiskey. We'll go back to whiskey, um, and um, yeah, we'll just we'll keep George Floyd in our in our minds, uh, in our in our hearts. Um, yeah, just just really terrible terrible shame what happened to him. Um, but hopefully, there'll be some sort of change. So back to White Mackay. Good whiskey. So if you're in the supermarket over the weekend, you think, oh, fancy a bottle of whiskey. Get yourself a bottle of White Mackay. Can't go far wrong with a bit of White Mackay. Um, it's a good one. So you'll see it. It's in a slightly different bottle to this. This is the an old style bottle. It's probably three, four years old. They've got a sort of taller, straighter side bottle now. Um, a shorter neck, I think. But it's a nice, classic, classic sort of shape um, for a, a, a blended whiskey. So that's good. Um, that's our white Mackay. Now then, um, yes, I've got notes because I my memory is shocking. Our next blend is a little bit different, and it was given to me by a work colleague. I think he got it from somebody as a gift, and he's not really into whiskey, so he thought of me. Good on him, and he um, said, "Do you fancy this?" I took one look at it and I says, "I, right, I'll take that off your hands, no bother. It's a bottle of Dimple. Dimple 
as you can see, it's got a very distinctive bottle. It's um, sort of three-sided squashed bottle. Um, it comes with this sort of wire um, on it, which just it's just a bit old-fashioned, really. It's just you know, and this bottle. No, I think this is a relatively. See, if you want to see if a bottle's old or not in the UK, you just look for this this UK customs. Um, Revenue and Customs Mark. If you see that, you know that this bottle's been produced probably in the last six to eight years. Um, I'm not sure when they brought that in, but it's basically to show that duty's been paid on it, and yada yada yada, all that official stuff. So, not that old a bottle. It looks like an old bottle, but they've got this wire on it, which is just it's quite smart, um, you know. And it's made by. Um, John Haig and Co. So if you know anything about whiskey, Haig, Haig Club. You know, see the blue bottle um, that's um, advertised by um, what's his name, David Beckham. He's a brand ambassador, I think, for Haig Club. Um, don't have a bottle of Haig Club, um, but I've tried it and it's nice. It's good. But this uh, dimple is made by the same crowd, same people. Um, and I don't know if, if any of you are fans of Breaking Bad, you might recognise this. Because um, apparently, I don't watch Breaking Bad, never have. Probably should, I should have, I should watch it really. But it appeared in Breaking Bad and apparently it was labelled as Dimple Pinch. Um, that'll probably make sense to you if you watch Breaking Bad. But yeah, I can see why they called it because it looks like, it looks like a pinched bottle. You know, you pinch it. It's quite cool. Um, it's not great for like, Trying to stack loads of bottles in your cupboard it's, it takes a lot of space but i suppose you can sort of put them next to each other a bit so dimple yeah i've actually gone through this is this bottle's only mm, what is it mm, i've only had this bottle maybe sort of six months and i'm already halfway through it so um that tells you that it's it's uh, it's one that i quite enjoy but dimple um a bit more on the expensive side blends wise um, you're looking at 38 to 40 pounds for this bottle 38 to 40 pounds so it's not that cheap not that cheap at all um, but it's it's a good quality whiskey um, absolutely um, so apparently John Haig and co have been on the go since 1627 so been, they've been about a while they've been around the block um, Cider game, cider game, try old monk rum. Right, I've never heard of that, but I'll need to look into it because I, I do like my rum. Um, old monk rum, I'll make a note of that, and um, I'll definitely take a look into it because um, I'm always interested in different runs. Um, at the moment, like I said, I'm enjoying this local rum to us. Um, it's made in Glasgow uh, called uh, Wester Rum. Um, they make a spiced rum, but they just recently have been doing sort of special editions, sort of 20, sort of 200 ml bottles of different uh, types. Uh, they did a white rum, they did a pineapple flavoured rum and a single cask rum, um, which was really interesting. Um, but uh, yeah. So the whiskies I've been drinking, so um, if you've just come on board, uh, Cider Game, um, is we've been drinking Famous Grouse. Famous Grouse, um, good good blended whiskey. So it's, they're all blended whiskies today. Um, my last stream, I, um, I looked at uh, single malt whiskies, uh, a few of them behind me. Um, so we've tried Famous Grouse, uh, White Mackay, which is... Um, really good um really good blended whiskey made in glasgow um full of flavor yeah good value for money because both these bottles i just showed you are under 20 pounds a bottle um and then now we're on to dimple um which is um like i said it's a bit more expensive um smoother right which one's smoother famous grouse Definitely Famous Grouse is a smoother whiskey. Definitely. Smooth. Um, but quite sweet. Um, quite malty, biscuity sort of flavours on um, on Famous Grouse. Uh, but to be honest, a White Mackay, just as nice. 
um, for, for a similar price. Um, so either of those two. Yeah, no, definitely give it a try. Famous Kraus or White Mackay, can't go wrong. Um, but Dimple, like I said, a little bit more expensive, 38 to 40 pounds a bottle. But you get a really cool bottle, look at this. Like after I finish this bottle, I'll probably like put some lights in it or something, or I don't know, put a candle at the top. I don't know. I don't think this will be going to the glass, glass recycling, this bottle. No way. No way. So, like I said, um, they've been going a while. 1627, this company, John Haig and Co. was set up. So it's blended with a high proportion of malt whiskey. So lots of really good quality stuff in here. Um, and a lot of people think that blended whiskey is no good and it's like, it's the cheap stuff. I'm not drinking blends. But actually a blended whiskey can can end up being better than a single malt because they can take all the good bits from different single malts and put them into one drink. So it's like drinking all these bottles behind me in one glass. Um, and if the master blender is good at his job, he'll be taking certain elements from different whiskies and putting them all together to make it into a really good quality uh, blend. So, um, so yeah, so this is what they say, uh, blended with a high proportion of malts, including um, a whiskey that I've mentioned before, Glen Kinshi, which is a lowland whiskey made just outside Edinburgh. Um, and it's a very, Glen Kinshi is a very light, grassy, green sort of flavoured whiskey. Um, it's just, oh, just lovely. If you, if you want to get into single malts, uh, side of the game um glen kinshi would be one i would suggest um they do a 12 year old it's it is about 40 to 50 pounds a bottle but um it's worth it it's good stuff so high proportion of glen kinshi in here also uh they've got a, a, a whiskey called Linkwood, which i've seen loads uh in the shops and stuff but i've never actually bought a bottle of Linkwood. um but I've heard it's good, so um, that's how. This is a little bit more expensive, and you can see here it says 15 years of age. Now, don't be misled and thinking, oh, it's like a 15-year-old single malt. No, that's not why it's got 15 on it. It's got 15 on it because um, mo all the whiskies in here will be older than 15 because they wouldn't be able to put 15 on the bottle if it was it had some three-year-old whiskey in it. No, couldn't do that, not legally. That would be misleading. So if it says 15 on there, you know that the youngest whiskey in here is 15 year old. So that gives you an idea of the quality of this because a 15 year old whiskey is no cheap. I've got a bottle of Old Pulteney, 15 year old here, that bottle sets you back almost a hundred pound um sort of i think it's 80 76 something like that high 80s 80 pound a bottle yeah and that's a a, a bottle of 15 year old single malt so that gives you an idea of what quality is in here okay so we'll uh We'll give it a try. We'll give it a pour. So I've got another glass, another different glass here. It's not as rounded. It's a little bit like the white Mackay glass. Um, not as rounded, but uh, another nice glass. I think this one is an LSA glass as well. So good quality. You hear good quality crystal. So uh, again, it's a screw top. Jeez, that was tight. There we go. Quite a nice screw top, actually quite good quality it's got like a bit of embossing and all that on it and it's um yeah it's quite nice um blue label ah oh, johnny walker you like johnny walker aha good man johnny walker's good do like johnny walker i uh, haven't got a johnny a johnny walker in my um my collection but uh, i'll need to get one um but yeah that's a really good blend so very good choice very good choice well done 
So um, we'll give it a little pour into this nice clean glass. Um, like I said before, I don't like um, mixing. I don't like mixing um, glasses and and you know using a, a a glass that's got a bit of other whiskey in it because it's just it's just not right. You just gotta you gotta respect whiskey. You know, whiskey is one of those things you just gotta gotta respect it. So. Let me get a 15 on that table. There you go. Cool. Chopped a bit of my head off, but it's all right. Um, oh, uh, just if you want to follow me, uh, just um, click the heart symbol. Um, and if you follow me, I'll follow you. Uh, that's what I've been doing. I've got, I think I've got four followers so far. So uh, thank you very much. Side of game. Cheers. Thank you. That's much appreciated. Um, I'll follow you back um, just shortly. There you go. I'm a man of my word. Uh, that's me following you now. Um, I hope that's worked. If it's not, I'll do it after the stream. Um, and then, uh, as uh, you know, I'm really new to Twitch and really new to streaming. But um, as the community grows, um, we're going to have some more exciting stuff. Um, for you guys to, to get involved with um, I until I get a certain amount of followers and a certain amount of hours on Twitch I can't have any subscribers but um, if you guys spread the word um, get people involved uh, your friends family your dads your uncles your aunties and your mothers and whoever likes whiskey um, you know get get them on um, I'll have I'm gonna try and have a certain amount of um streams a week and have a bit of a sort of semi-regular schedule just so you guys know where i'm at and what i'm doing um but if you just keep an eye on my page um schedule is going to come up and all that cheers thank you very much side of game that's really much appreciated um because like i said this is my second stream I'm completely new to this so um i'm going to try my best and um help people explore whiskey and um get to know whiskies and and uh hopefully get as enthusiastic as I am about whiskey with me so yeah cheers thank you very much really much appreciated um, so yeah uh, I've got a Facebook page as well if you search for Dramshare on Facebook you'll see um, the same um, profile picture as I've got on my Twitch um, find that give us a, a follow or a like um, and uh, that'll that I'll be putting posts on there as well with what's coming up and schedule and so on so you'll We'll give you an idea of what we're doing. Um, cheers. Thank you very much. So, dimple. Uh, I've got the bottle nicely placed now so you can see the label and all that. Um, so, like I said, it's got a high proportion of malt whiskey in in, it, in the blend. Um, Glenkinshire and Linkwood being um, the better known of them. Um, Glenkinshire and Linkwood are both... Um, like single malt whiskies, um, but there will be a lot of grain whiskies in here because that's what a lot of these blenders use to sort of bulk up their whiskey is, is grain whiskey, which is usually a bit cheaper. Um, but yeah, look, good colour on this. Um, it's described as a light amber. And again, I would say it's probably a, a little bit darker than a light amber, but no, it's um, it's a good, it's a good colour. Um, I think it probably does have a little bit of colorants added, um, but I'm more than happy to be to prove wrong on that. Um, but yeah, good, a good colored whiskey. Um, if we give it a wee spin here, we'll see what sort of legs we can get out of it. If I put it against the dark background, you might see some legs just coming up there. The odd leg here and there, so it's not very oily. Whoa, wow. I've not had this whiskey for a while, so I I'd forgotten what it what it smells like. But well, officially it's described as a medium body on the smell, right? With warming notes of spice and caramel. I would say that's more than a medium body. That's pretty full on. Wow. That is. <laughs> but it smells just beautiful. It's like a. 
it's just it's like again i described one of the whiskies the other night as like a fruit cake like um like christmas cake smell to it wow just amazing um it's just a glass full of smell as soon as you put your nose in you just you just get a waft of this It's quite spicy smelling and it's very sweet smelling. God, I could smell that whiskey all day. It's just delicious. Um, it's like a meal in a glass. That's what I smell, you know. Really, you can tell this is quality stuff. Like compared to Famous Grouse and White Macaw, you can tell this is a different level, you know. If you gave this to a connoisseur of whiskey now, some expert that's been drinking whiskey for 40, 50 years, I would say, you know, 80% of the time they would guess that was a single malt. Whew. Or they might guess it was something like, you know, like a maybe an, even an Irish whiskey. J Jameson's comes to mind. So if you, if you know you like Jameson's, well, the smell anyway, it's just like Jameson's, all right? And Jameson's, I've got a bottle of Jameson's, but I've not opened it. Um, but I'm gonna save that. Someday I'll do a, like, whiskies from around the world. So it might just be like Scottish, Welsh, Irish, you know, maybe American whiskies. But, you know, as we as we go on, hopefully I'll get more whiskies in that we can um, we can try together. Yeah, the smell of that is, you can tell the difference from the White Mackay and the Famous Grouse. It's really strong, just full flavour. Full smell, even, not full waft, I'd call it. So, yeah, impressed with the smell of it. Impressed with the nose, absolutely impressed. Um, and like I said, it's a part of the experience of whiskey, smelling it. You know, if you don't smell your whiskey, you're missing out. The smell's there. It's not going to cost you any more. Smell it. You know? And you can smell it for as long as you want. You know, you can go to a pub. I don't think the barman would be too impressed with you if you just sat there and smelt the whiskey all night long and then didn't drink it. Or just smelt the whiskey for two or three hours and not drink a lot of drink. But that's your drink. You've bought it. You can do whatever you want with it. And that's what I'm all about, is I'm all about do what you want with your whiskey. Enjoy it the way you like. If you want to put ice with it, put ice with it. I don't put ice with my whiskey, but that's my choice. I'm not here to tell you how to do it. I'm just here to inform you of what I get out of this whiskey and these various whiskies that we're going to try. And it might give you an idea of what you might like. wow that's just delicious it's so balanced like it's just quality quality runs right the way through this absolutely right the way through it it's smooth this is smooth like who was asking me the other night slide again you were asking me um which one was smoothest out of famous grouse and white Mackay, and i told you famous grouse well we've got a new winner dimple 15 Wow, smooth. God, yeah, it's just. Just amazing quality. And that's what you get for the money. 38 to 40 pounds this bottle. That's what you get. You know, you get what you pay for. It's like anything in life. Um, I'll try not to go too philosophical, but you get what you pay for. You buy cheap, you buy twice. You buy expensive, you buy once. That is, that's how I tend to do things. I will spend a bit extra, but in the long run, it'll pay off. And um, a bottle of Dimple 15-year-old, I think, um, could do the trick. Um, if you're looking for something smooth, a blend. You know, look at this. Like, Imagine, right? you wrap that up. Um, this didn't come with the box. Um, if, it, if it came with the box, it might not be that shape, but 
I imagine you wrap it up for somebody at Christmas, they'd be like, what the hell is this? Or for their birthday or for Father's Day that's coming up, obviously. This would be a good choice. I did notice, though, before coming online, I did do a little bit of research, and it's quite difficult to get hold of the, this 15-year-old. Um, so you might have to do a bit of hunting about, but um, it, if you find it, it's good. It's good stuff, and um, oh, yeah, I <laughs> can't get over. I've not drank it for a while, like I said. It's probably... Last time I drank this whiskey was probably towards the end of last year. And um, yeah, amazing. So it's it's balanced, it's smooth, um, it's sweet, quite toffee, toffee sort of flavours coming through. Um, and it's quite long on the, officially it says it's got a short finish. Um, when I was looking it up about this, it says it's got a short finish, but I can still taste it. And last time I took a, a drink was what, about a minute ago. Um, so I would disagree with that. I would say it's a, a medium to long finish um, on this. So good value for money. Um, you get a little hint of smoke, but not enough to put anybody who doesn't like smoke off. Um, and yeah, just sort of like a nice multi rounded flavor. Um, and then sort of like a fudgy sort of finish. Quite, like if you've just eaten a piece of like really nice fudge and it's gone and it every now and then you get a little hmm that's what that's what you get yeah it's good it is good I must say it's good stuff um so yeah, I haven't got much more else to say about um, Dimple. I will put a bit of water with it because I do that with all my whiskies. Um, put a little little splash. Oh God, it's gone all over my phone and everything. So a little splash of water. With the water, I think it's probably opened it up a little bit. It's a little bit more um, spicy notes on the nose. But that's it. Then you're not getting the caramel so much anymore. You're just getting that spice. And a little bit of warmth. A bit of warmth and spice. This would be a good one around Christmas time. And on the taste, it's still balanced and smooth, but there's no smoke anymore. And there's like a, a more more of an undertone of honey and toffee, I would say. It's sort of just brought it down a level. It's just brought it all down, which is what water normally does to any whiskey, is it just brings it down a notch, brings it down a level. But there's some whiskies... Um, and even, even some cask strength whiskies that are strong anyway, you put a little bit of water and they get stronger. And you think, how does that work? I'm not a scientist. I'm not, I don't know how that, what the, 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 the science is behind that. But there's some whiskies that you put a bit of water, you think, oh, it's going to dull it down a bit. But no, bang, you've got, it blows your head off. Um, and that's, that's what's amazing about whiskey. Um, that's what I get so enthused about it. Um, it's the possibilities are endless, like they say, you know. Hmm. Yeah. No. Good one. It's a good one. I just don't know how available it is. So um, that's the only thing. If you need to get a bottle of Dimple, you just need to s search it out a little bit. You know, find it. Um, I don't know. But it's good. Good stuff. I'm glad that, that my friend or my colleague gave me this. Because um, uh, I always steer, steer away from these sorts of whiskies. Because to me, they just look old-fashioned. So you think, oh, they're just going to be old-fashioned, rough, around the edges sort of whiskey. Whiskey that, you know, people back in the, you know, 60s, 70s were drinking. You think, oh, no, it's no good. I wouldn't, I wouldn't buy a bottle of that. But seeing as I got given it, I thought, well, it'd be rude not to. So, yeah. 
good one good good whiskey um so yeah side again i think you and me are the only ones here just now but it doesn't matter um like you say hopefully we'll get the community built up um over the next few weeks and we'll get we'll get more people watching and if we get more people watching i promise you there is something coming up um that i can't do at the moment because i've got i've got no subscribe button but when i do get a subscribe button um there's going to be something exciting going on um, and i'm not going to reveal it until then but i will every now and then make a mention of it so It's a nice glass this actually. LSA is the make. Um, they make quite a lot of whiskey type glasses. Um, this glass that the bottle is actually sitting on is an LSA glass. I think this one is designed more for gin. It's more of a gin glass. Um, straight sided. This one's obviously a bit curved. Um, but again, nice quality glass. Um, it's got a little it's got a little air bubble in it, which this one's got an air bubble as well. So I think that's maybe their sort of little trademark. It's got an air bubble. It's LSA. Um, but yeah, I wonder if you can see the air bubble, the bubble in it. Uh, you can sort of see it there. Where is it? There. Yeah, nice glasses. Because I normally drink my glass. My <laughs> not too many. This is what I normally drink my whiskey out of. Okay, cut glass, decanter, really good quality. This is Royal Scott Crystal. And um, I've had this for, well, I've, had, I've got two of these. And um, my wife always says to me, I'm not washing those because if I break them, you'll not forgive me. And she's probably right. My parents gave me these um, 10 years ago for Christmas when I just got into whiskey and I've looked after them and they're still spotless. But Royal Scott Crystal, um, somebody was on here the other day when I was um, doing my first stream saying, oh, a glass is a glass. And it's true, glass is a glass. Um, you, know, you can drink your whiskey out of a plastic beaker and it'll probably taste the same. But it's all about the experience. You know, seeing a whiskey in a glass like that is quite special. And it all adds to the experience. Um, you know, this is hand cut, so that was done somebody by hand. And it's got this lovely bit at the bottom here as well, um, which reminds me a little bit of the old Pulteney bottle, which also has this really cool feature on the bottom, which is the because uh, it's called, it's known as the maritime malt, so it's got the um, it's got the compass on the bottom, and they didn't have to do that, but they did. Um, and it's quite cool when you see it through there. It's really smart. Look at that. But I will do a feature one day about bottles and packaging and, and quality and this, that, and the other. You know, most whiskies, most single malt whiskies come with quite a lot of them. A wooden, a wooden stopper, yeah? Like this Crag and Moor Distiller's Edition, which is absolutely delicious. But quite expensive it's about 70 80 pounds a bottle and the cork we'll look at the cork this is a com composite cork it's not a, a genuine one piece cork so a bit like your bottles of wine you get a composite cork it's a bit cheaper than your proper cork but what i like it's wood right and this i think is where old pulteney missed the trick i like old pulteney and i like I said in my first stream, me and my wife were married in Old Pulteney just over a year ago. And we know the distillery manager, um, this guy here, who signs, well, it's not signed every bot, but a guy called Malcolm Warren is the distillery manager. Uh, amazing, great guy, so easy to get on with. It's a great distillery, great whiskey. Um, I love Wick. Um, I've married into a Wick family, so I've got to say that, but I do actually love Wick. Um, and they're great people up there. And if you're ever on the North Coast 500 route, whenever you're allowed to go on it again after this bloody COVID-19 malarkey's over, um, 
visit visit Wick. Um, but like I said, what they missed out on a little bit is this stopper. Give me the plastic. Really? Why plastic? I think I know why. If you look at the top, it's also got the uh, the compass, right? But they could have done that with wood. And wood is a sustainable product. Plastic isn't. So I, on this bo bottle, it's the only thing I've got against it is it's a plastic top. And I think they could have made it with wood. They could have made it with wood. So that is the only thing I would say to Malcolm if he's ever watching this is maybe think about using wood rather than plastic because we all know plastic is not the best. But if you look, they did use a proper cork. Let's learn how to do this. They used a proper one piece cork. So that's quite expensive to use one piece of cork like that. It's not cheap. So they did the right thing with the cork, wrong thing with the top. Um, and everything else is perfect, I would say. Um, really good quality packaging. But we'll do, we'll do, we'll do a bit on packaging on a day where I'm maybe not drinking. Um, I'll do a bit on packaging and bottles. Just for the fuss. Yeah. So, so yeah. But like I said, most blends come with a screw top, which is understandable because you're only paying twenty pounds a bottle, twenty five pounds a bottle. Um, you know, you can't expect them to go and put a cork in that bottle and, and everything. It's it's quite a lot to ask, really. So I can sort of see why they do it. Oh, yeah. That's just really nice. Really nice dimple. 15. It says there, fine ori old original, aged 15 years, blended Scotch whiskey. What else does it say on the bottle? The rich and smooth aroma of dimple celebrating more than 50 years of something Scotch whiskey, something creation with John Haig, the founder. It doesn't say much else on it. It doesn't have like a label on the back. Well, <laughs> I don't know where the back would be, probably here, but I haven't got a label there. It's got a little bit on the side saying drink responsibly on the on the shoulder of the bottle, I should say. I should use the right terminology. The shoulder of the bottle. So it just says this since 1627. Um, first distill first distilling family. Hmm. There you go. But it definitely comes in a nice nice bottle. Really do. So yeah, and obviously like I say on, on a lot of my posts and stuff, is that everybody should really drink responsibly. You know, um, that's one thing. You'll have noticed that this stream is, um, I've got it for adult audiences only. That's really to try and stop people under the age of 18 watching because I don't really want to encourage underage drinking. Um, something that I never did when I was growing up. Um, well, I say I never did. I did sneak the odd swig of my dad's bitter when I was growing up. Uh, which is not, you know, in the house, it's not the end of the world, but it's, you know, we really do need to make sure that pe people are enjoying whiskey responsibly. It says it on all these bottles. Um, and obviously, if you're pregnant, don't drink. Um, and uh, just, yeah, you know, enjoy it responsibly. Like I said, you know, these some of these bottles I've had for years and they're still not finished. Whiskey is not there for you to drink the whole bottle in a one. It's not a bottle of wine. Um, but... A lot of people say, when you talk about whiskey, they say, oh, it's expensive. It's expensive. I'm not buying, I'm not going to buy a bottle of whiskey. It's too expensive. Right, okay, well, but do you go to the shop and buy a bottle of wine for £12? The answer to that question is probably yes. And how long does that bottle of £12 wine last you? Is the answer one night? Yeah. So, why would you not go to a shop and buy a bottle of whiskey for £40 that lasts you two years? I'm saying so look at it in context yes you know if you see the label in the shop you get your wine section they're all like six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve pounds 
and then you see your whiskies at sort of 35 40 45 50 you think oh that's expensive yeah because that stuff sat in a cask for like 12 years waiting for you to drink it your wines maybe sat for a couple of years in a mahusive cask so don't compare whiskey with wine price wise that's what i'm saying somebody's cutting the grass that that's another thing actually smells if you're out and about try and notice smells we're all guilty these days i think of going about not actually noticing not taking in not absorbing our environment but this time of year when everybody's cutting the grass just stop for a minute and have a smell and then that makes a memory in your head what does cut grass smell like and one day you'll pick up a, a, a glass of whiskey and you'll go ah oh, cut grass yeah so give that a try don't be afraid to smell things and you know and, t and, and be inspired by smells um, you know enjoy them because they're all part of our senses and um, it's what makes life I think enjoyable is visual experiences smelling experiences music you know or you know it's, it's all it's all a part of, of enjoying your senses and enjoying life um, sorry to go all philosophical there but um, bringing it back to whiskey it's all to do with smell and the taste yeah when you taste something you know I'm 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 not no expert about identifying flavors that's where I've got my notes I go online and I see what people have written and I think right does that seem right yeah mm, I don't think so and if I've written something down on one of these sheets here and I don't taste it I won't tell you because it's all about identifying your own flavors but i'm still quite early on in my whiskey tasting career i've only been drinking whiskey for 10 years so i'm still um learning the different flavors and stuff so i'm trying my best um but i am i am um, using some other people's uh tasting notes and um, comments to, to 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 make this so i'm not claiming ownership of these tasting notes by any way shape or form lovely so yeah dimple 15 good quality stuff if you can find it that's the problem if you can find it so that was lovely bit of dimple something a bit different so quite i would say though it is quite an old-fashioned blend that um you know if you've got a dad or a granddad uh, sort of between 50 and 70 there's a good chance they would like that because it would remind them of the sort of blends that they drank back in their 20s and 30s possibly um, but not taken away from it um, dimple is a, is a good blend um, now the next blend um, it's quite an interesting one okay um, and I showed it at the start of the stream so it's no surprise what it is it's a blend called black bottle so there it is so docker's lad um you said here my best advice is don't mix 27 year old whiskey baileys and vodka i'm pretty nasty and they'll show up because piff already mentioned wales and whiskey that's true how are you getting on i'm from wales myself i'm from a little village village town called denby so I know where Oswestry Os is, uh, absolutely. So I mentioned you in a video they watched your stream. Work done ethically. What is that? I'll need to look at that. Um, Sa Sashin Mahila 07. Thank you. I will have a look at that. Um, thanks for joining. Uh, both you guys, du uh, Duckers Lad and uh, Sashin Mahibo 07. Thank you very much for viewing. Um, welcome to the uh, the dram share. Um, you're from Slough. Well, well, I actually lived in Windsor for just over a year. Uh, I worked down in Windsor for just over a year, so I know Slough. I know the car park for some reason 
the most memorable moment for me in Slough was the Tesco car park where you go underneath and there's little lights above the bays to show if the, the, the parking space is available or not. I loved that. And the Krispy Kreme donuts in the, in the Tesco. Loved that. Um, can you watch it in the stream? Because it's a good video. Sorry, um, I've literally got a laptop. I'm doing this on a laptop, so I haven't got multiple screens. Um, I can, okay, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll, 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 I'll take my <laughs> It's a good Tesco. Uh, let me see if I can watch it. I don't know if this will, um, oh God, this is probably going to get rid of uh, the stream. Hold, hold on. I'm going to watch this. Too many uh, things open here. Too many tabs. Too busy. Three hours and three minutes and thirty two seconds. Da -da 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 -da. I hope you're all still there. I'm probably watching something else. Oh Christ. Sorry, it's not playing ball. Hmm. Hang on, I've got to sort things out here. I've got too much stuff open. I think. Is that? Are we still okay quality-wise? Do another tab on the computer. Yeah. I think my internet's maybe a bit maxed out just now. Um, you can explain to me what's in the video. It's possible. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what I can maybe do. I can maybe see it on my... Um, I might be able to see it on my, um, my phone. Maybe it's this one. No. Oh, I can't see the chat. Ah. Uh, um, let me try watching it again. Ho hopefully everybody doesn't mind holding on. I better close a few things here, otherwise it'll, it'll not work. I don't know if you guys can still see me, but I can't see you. Well, I can't see you anyway, but I can't see me seeing you. Right, I'm gonna hold on to you. I hope it's not a bad thing. I look like this guy. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. Thank you very much. That's put a smile on my face. <laughs> well, thank you very much for the follow. Uh, Sashin Mail 07. Sorry, I'm really bad at reading out these um, these uh, names. Um, hello, beautiful Arabia goddess. Arabia goddess. Oh gosh, interesting. Are you off? Oh well, say hello to Slough for me, um, and uh, spread the word. If anybody likes whiskey, beautiful Arabian goddess. There you go. Do you like whiskey? That is the question. That's what we're here talking about, whiskey. Um, I've been drinking a few different whiskeys now. Um, right, cheers, uh, Sashin Mahil07. Good to see you. We'll maybe catch you next time. Um, so I've been trying a few different whiskeys that I've got, but we're talking blends today. Um, my, last, my first stream was all about single malt whiskey. Um, but at the moment, I'm trying these different blended whiskies because I am a great believer that blended whiskies are just as good as single malt whiskies. But I must admit, I mainly drink single malt whiskies. This is the first one we drank, Famous Grouse. Good standard whiskey. 
um, apparently the most uh, popular malt whiskey in Scotland, I think. Is that what I said? Let's go through my notes. Yes, best selling Scotch in Scotland. There you go. Might not be in England or anywhere else in the world, but famous grouse. Then we had a go at White Mackay. White Mackay, really good, triple matured um, blend made around Glasgow. Really good, yeah, no. Beautiful Arabian goddess, good to have you along. Um, we're, uh, I think there's a, they make a whiskey in, I think it's in Dubai, or I can't remember where it is. They definitely make a whiskey, I can't remember the name of it now, but you probably got a distillery not too far away from you, so welcome, uh, welcome, welcome. And then the third one we tried was this one, which is really unusual, Dimple. Um, 15, matured for 15 years, so it means that every whiskey uh, in here um, is at least 15 years or older. So good, good quality. I'm really impressed with that. Quite difficult to get hold of the Dimple 15, um, but if you can get hold of it, buy it. Buy a bottle or two because it's good stuff. Um, and what we're on to now is um, Black Bottle. Um, I'm just going to follow you guys that have just followed me because that's what I do here. Uh, I'm all about um, keeping, a, keeping a Twitch um, community going so thank you very much for the follows um beautiful Ari arabian goddess and shashin mahil 07 thank you very much much appreciated spread the word anybody likes whiskey as far as i'm aware there's nobody else on twitch that does this so um i'm quite keen to spread the word um about whiskey and trying to get people enthused about whiskey because uh, i am um i'm only uh, in my early 30s and um, I've been drinking whiskey since I was in my early 20s um, and I think it's a it's a good drink for people to, to, to enjoy and it's a bit like wine you know more and well obviously the big thing just now is gin obviously gin is the big thing everybody's into gin everybody likes this gin that gin great whiskey should be the same um, whiskey is basically just the same as gin just a bit older shall I say so like I said black bottle this is our last one we're going to try today um, I've gone on a little bit um, so I'll definitely go over my two hour time here so um, don't worry I'm not going anywhere at uh, at three o'clock we're gonna give this a try um, black bottle now this is a this is a new shape bottle it had a, an older bottle that looked very much like the old Pulteney. Um, it, it was a very similar shaped bottle to this um, about five, six, maybe seven years ago. Uh, they've recently changed to this style of bottle, which I'm okay with. Um, I actually preferred the last the last bottle personally, but um, but this is quite an interesting flat bottle. Um, reminds me a little bit of. my singleton it's quite a flat bottle um, good stuff this can't wait till I, I do I do a review of this 18 year old you can only buy this at the distillery by the way um, or online I think you can get it online or like in China I think Ch China um, or Japan I can't remember anyway black bottle so bit of history about black bottle so originally they made this they started they, they, they got they were established in 1879 as you can see from the bottle big 1879 there right but then they stopped production um, for a long while I'm not sure when they stopped production but they stopped production and they started off again back in 2013 um, and I think that older style bottle was the first bottle they went into then just in the last couple of years I think they've, they've changed to this type of bottle which is beautiful really nice um, really bold date there um, there's a little bit of an indentation in the back that says distilled blended and bottled 
Gordon Graham and Co Limited. Um, really nice quality labels and sort of quite golden effect. Um, the word black bottle is actually a little bit raised. You know, I, I quite like how I like tactile bottles um, and a bit like the dimple. Quite tactile, I think, because the shape of it and a little bit of wire around it. Um, the the black ball is just as just as nice, um, and it couldn't come in a clear bottle. Surely, if it's called black bottle, it's got to come in a black bottle, no? Um, so, um, so yeah. So it's known for its balanced mix of fruitiness and spice, along with a little bit of peaty island notes and um i was introduced to, to black bottle by oh, there, was a, there was a shopkeeper somewhere i went to a, a whiskey shop and he says um i said to him look i normally buy in a single malt but i fancy buying a nice blend have you got any nice blends going and the guy said to me well actually we've got this one just in i'm sure he says that to everyone uh it's called black bottle i was like all right okay what's the what we would say here in Scotland, what's the crack with that? What's the crack? What's the what's the deal with that? You know, what's the crack with that? And he said, Okay, black bottle is a blend, right? But it's not any old blend. It's actually a blend of of all Isla single malts. And I said, Alright, well I don't really like Isla whiskies. They're too smoky and peaty for me. And he said, um, well look, don't don't worry because the majority of the of the single malt in black bottle is Buna Haben. And I knew for a fact that I liked the twelve year old bat Buna Haben because it's not like an Isla whiskey. It's it's um it's more of a Highland or an Island whiskey. It's um quite sweet. A little bit of smoke, but not really peaty. Not really peaty. So I thought, oh okay, well, I'll give it a try. I'm so glad that I did. Um because it is a really good quality um blend um price wise it's not too bad either 18 to 20 pounds a bottle for this um it's at 40 percent like all my blends have been today like most blends are at 40 percent unless it's a bit unusual it says on the front blended scotch whiskey curiously rich and slightly smoky whiskey crafted to a secret family recipe and like i said earlier on the only people that know what proportion of what goes into these blends is the master blender and um, he is a guy that is in charge of the whole deal and he knows how much of this whiskey goes in and how much of that whiskey and we will never know so all we can do is surmise I guess right but apparently lots of Buna Haben in this which will make it um, quite sweet little bit of smoke quite rich flavor so that's that we'll get we'll get poured into my favorite glass which is the crystal i've kept this to last because i think it's out of them all i think this is the best so again screw top quite a nice screw top actually with um the gordon sort of family emblem i'm pretty sure that is the family em em emblem for the, for the family for the clan gordon is this sort of hand holding a dagger? That's not really gonna focus, is it? But never mind. So yeah, it's nice. Little cheeky sniff. Have a little pour of this. Too much because it's like it's only three o'clock here in the UK, and I don't normally drink until after tea time, so it's unusual for me. Okay. So straight off, I can see the colour. Quite dark, okay. Quite dark, but a really nice dark colour. That is beautiful. And look at it in the glass. Look at it in that. All those serrations in the glass, and it's it's a little bit like looking into a diamond. You get all these different glimmers of light coming through. So it's known for its balanced mix of fruitiness and spice, along with the P.T. Isla notes. Um, and like I said, the highest proportion of malt whiskey in this is Bunahaben. So if you like Bunahaben, if you've tried Bunahaben, you think, oh, I like Bunahaben, 12 year old that is, there's a good chance you'll like this. But yeah, there's definitely, you, you straight away, 
get a smoky sea smell. Like a like a bonfire near the beach, right? Wow. So on the official notes it says polished oak. Polish, yes, getting that completely. Porridge, brown sugar, cut grass, like I mentioned a minute ago. And subtle smoke. Well the subtle smoke tech. Cut grass. Maybe a hint. Just at the start, the smell, and then it goes. Brown sugar, yes. Porridge, yeah. Malty, subtle. <sighs> Sweet. Brown sugar, yeah. Getting that. A little bit of sort of like molasses, sort of sweet smell to it. Yeah. Now, the only thing with this glass is you can't see the legs. Cannot see the legs, unfortunately, so. It's a shame. Um, but there you go. Whew, yeah, good one. So, what else does it say on the bottle? Watch. No, it basically says on the side of the bottle what it says on the back of the bottle, or on the front of the bottle. Black bottle. So, yeah, it's always been produced in a black glass sort of bottle. If you look at it through light, God, you actually can't see through it. Oh, you can just about see a little bit. It's like, like a dark purple. Funny enough, it's not like green glass. But, um, so yeah, it's quite distinctive. You'd, you'd notice that on the shelves straight away if you saw it. Um, so let's have a little taste here. Mm. It's so easy to drink. Um, it's, it's nothing like an Isla single malt, really. It's um, it's very sweet. Um, sort of got gingery sort of notes to it. Um, golden syrup sort of sweetness coming through. Um, officially, it says chocolate spread and brown bread. Mm. I can't see it myself. Um, it says candied ginger. I think you do get a hint of ginger in it. Um, but the golden syrup more than anything, I think. Sweet. Sweet. Um, very sweet. Quite sort of coats the tongue quite nicely. Mm. Yeah. It's good stuff, like. It's good. Um, it's got a bit of spice to it. It sort of tingles on the tongue a little bit. Um, a bit of spice. Um, so no, yeah, good quality stuff. Like in the colour, just look at that. It's just lovely. See, yeah, like I said with the bottle, I've never actually, I never thought to do that. But if you look through the bottle into into the, the light, it's actually purple. It's actually purple. So I don't know what bottle bank you'd put that in, because in the UK here you've got clear glass, green glass, brown glass. That's your lot. Um, so I don't know what you'd put that in. You'd probably put it in the green glass, but or the brown. No, you put it in the brown. Yeah. Um. Hmm. Hmm. I'm gonna put a little splash of water. See what it does. Just a little splash, mind. Ooh. There you go. Just a couple of little drops. Don't drown your whiskey. Unless you're starting off, and like I said before, if you're starting off drinking whiskey, you know, um, hmm, let's have a let's have a try of it with a bit of water. Ooh, actually, a little bit of water with it it's made it a little bit spicier. It's made it a little bit spicier. Um, hmm. And towards the end, you get like a little bit of um, sweetness, like like honey sweetness. So it's 
it's almost like a not a bitter sweet, but it's it's on the bitter end of sweet. If that makes sense, um, that sort of dry sweetness that you get from really good quality honey. But yeah, you know, for the price, eighteen to twenty pounds a bottle, and it's a bottle you could buy to somebody, and they'd be like, "What's that? That looks really special. It's really nice," and it is. For that price, twenty pounds. It's an easy, that's an easy, good Father's Day gift. Um, so yeah, that would be my suggestion for a Father's Day gift. If you know your dad likes, or your granddad or whoever likes really good quality whiskey, black bottle, and you'll easily find that in the shops. Unlike the dimple, where I think you'd struggle to find it elsewhere. Yeah, there's not much else really to say about Black Bottle. Um, it's 40 percent, same as all the other whiskies I've done today. It comes in this really distinctive black bottle, but a flat bottle um, underneath. Nothing fancy going on there. No screw top. It's got the Gordon family sort of crest out there. It looks like a dagger being held. Um, Really good, really good, high quality looking thing, you know, for for twenty pounds. It's a lot of good whiskey for twenty pounds. Um, so, no, it'd be a good one. So, on that note, um, oh, actually, there's one thing I'd want to show you. Talking about colour of whiskey, um, I'd want to show you something that I've got. Um, now, most of my whiskies that I drink, or pretty much all the whiskies that I drink, I try and keep one miniature of each one. Because there's nothing worse than finishing a bottle of whiskey and then realising, ah, oh, what was that whiskey like again? Or I'd like to try that whiskey again. And then you'd have to go and buy a whole new bottle. But I keep little miniatures of all my whiskies, just for my own. It's a bit like a, a whiskey bank, I sort of call it. But I wanted to show you this. I've got this box that it was a Christmas gift from my wife. Um, it had gins in it, but I've drank all the gin and then used it to keep these bottles and I want you to see the difference in colour with these different whiskies. Look at that. Each of those is a different whiskey and look at the slight variation in colour from the from the lightest sorry, the lightest to the darkest. Um that's really quite interesting. This is actually an Imperial 13. That distillery doesn't actually make whiskey anymore. Um, but I've still got a bit of that in a bottle. And it just that just shows you the slight variance in um, in colours of whiskey. I'd like to show you that just before I go today. Um, so yeah, so any if I get any miniatures or anything like that, I always keep the bottle because it's really handy for keeping little samples. So, um, so that's about it really. Um, I'm gonna carry on enjoying my flat bottle. And I hope that you've all enjoyed the stream. Um, I'm hoping that every time I do the stream, it all gets a bit more fluid and a bit better. Um, and um, I hope you all enjoy it. And thank you very much for everybody who's uh, followed me today. Um, I'll, I'll, I think I've already followed you back um, and every time I go live there should be a little notification um, so I'm not sure when my next uh, stream is going to be but I'll try and fit one in before the end of the week so maybe Saturday night, Sunday night um, most likely it'll be Saturday night but we'll see um, I'll let you know in advance and um, yeah, spread the word let people know that if you know people in your life that likes whiskey let them know where I am. Um, Twitch is not exactly the place where the older generation hang about, but um, I know that lots of young people um, are getting into whiskey and I'd like to help introduce them to different whiskies. So if you know of anybody who's got an interest in whiskey, give them a shout, let them, let them know where I am. It's Dramshare, just do a search for Dramshare on Twitch um, or Facebook. 
uh, and you'll see the same um, profile picture uh, as I've got here. Um, and yeah, um, like I said, everybody drink responsibly. Um, make your whiskey last, because um, once it's gone, it's gone. Um, and yeah, we'll um, we'll hopefully catch you all again uh, very soon. So um, cheers, slanjava, yechida. Uh, take care of yourselves and others, and um, we'll catch you on the next one. Cheers. <laughs>